Hello, everybody! Anime Reflux! Woo! Yay! Yay. Yay. Okay. A little delayed on that one, but hey. Yay. Um, so, the anime we're watching this week is... God, this is weird. Listening only one headphone. Um, we're doing a Pet Shop of Horrors this week, which has a grand total of four episodes. I'm actually really surprised you guys did this one. Yeah, well, Why? I mean, it's it's full length, but it is four episodes. I don't know. We've we've cut out uh, anime or disqualified them for similar reasons. So we have, but the very we like have? most of those ones. Yeah, we have, but those ones tended to be like, oh, this is just garbage anyway. So who cares? This one actually had a kind of intriguing premise, or at That's least a true. unique one. So. I thought we only stopped. I thought we only didn't do stuff because it wasn't full length or because we all vetoed it. Uh, like in the earlier days, before we had the group veto, there were occasions where we effectively did do a group veto for shows like this, where there just wasn't much to it. Yeah, but thankfully this is a different type of show because it's, it's uh, more like an anthology of stories. Is, is, I think, what we settled on for it. Hmm. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. That's the impression so, I got, anyway. Yeah, so this show is a little weird. Yeah. A little weird. In a good a way. weird. This is fucking Monkey's Paw Pets. Yeah. I was thinking more like Twilight Zone or Goosebumps or that also, style of show. Did you watch more than one episode? No, just one. Yeah, which this is just the one. I mean, I like the concept just from the intro, which was very cute with the guy that had wanted a tiger, so he got a paper tiger that turned into a real tiger. Don't show it to anybody. I was having a tiger viewing party. <laughs> that is that is the exact opposite of the contract you signed. Well done. <laughs> The only reason I got a tiger was for my tiger aficionados club. <laughs> so that we could all appreciate it together. <laughs> it's all I have left. Tigers are my favorite and you ruined them. He also likes William Blake poetry for reasons. Anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> poetry reference jokes aside... Um, yeah, I didn't. Good luck with that tiger, one. Tiger, tiger, burning bright. No? Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, so... I may yeah. be an English major. That doesn't mean I read and remember all poetry. Oh. That's pretty famous. Anyway. So, yeah. The show opens. Uh doesn't really have an opening or an ending. In fact, it didn't seem to have credits, from what I could tell. Um... No, I don't think so. Uh, it opens with a guy, rich guy, on the phone, uh, talking to a pet shop owner who is a mildly effeminate man uh, in... I'm going to say... mildly. The voice, at the very least, is very much male. Uh, Dude, look like a lady. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's anime. A lot of the time, the only indication you have is the voice. So. Eh. That, 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 that is anime. anime so. Eh, I've seen trappier traps. Yeah. Yeah. Very tall as well. So that's that. kind of masculine. Anyway, uh, so he's in sort of faux noble decor and uh, uh, adornment. Um talking to this rich dude and he's like hey i bought this tiger from you so that i could show it to my buddies that are rich and like tigers for reasons and pet shop, literally pet shop just guys. gave me a scroll yeah pet shop guys like I, well you weren't supposed to show that was it in the you signed the asshole i literally made you sign a contract before you took this fucking thing saying you would not show this to anyone else but and like the first thing you did it's the theme of the show, actually. Yeah, pretty much. 
mean, there's, there's lots of there's lots of other shows that are like this where it's like if you get something from this particular place it will have conditions and stuff that align to something about the buyer's personality to be like overcome something problematic about yourself and you don't die yeah pretty much I can say so, there's there's a bunch of shows in Western media that are similar to this, and you know, this was a fairly unique spin on that idea, which is nice. Um, but yeah, Paper Tiger, and then the Paper Tiger becomes a real tiger, kills the rich dude, and yeah, mm-hmm. that's the intro, pretty much done. And uh, then we get police investigation into the animal mauling that have happened to happen there. It's like, oh, it's a big thing. Maybe it was like a lion or a tiger. There's no tigers in whatever place it was. They never really specified. They just said that the shop is in Chinatown. Oh, yeah. Chinatown. Chinatown, Chinatown where? Who the fuck knows? China. There's no tigers it's Chinatown, in Japan, China. America. Yeah. So... We speak in Japanese, but everyone has Western names. So who the fuck knows? I assume Japan, it's America. supposed to be America. I assume so as well, but... When you have your detective with the blonde hair... Yeah, he's pretty blatantly American. And with the, the star Challenger. on his chest yeah. and the revolver in his holster that he fires the drop of a hat. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's America. I mean, that's as America as you could possibly get, really. I don't um, like that that's your implication of what America is. It's... No, no he's, he's not wrong. Shut it's, up, Slice, yeah. but he doesn't know. I own five guns, okay? Shut up. Slicer, stop <laughs> disproving. I'm, I don't need you to prove his point for him. I want you to shut up so that he doesn't know that he's right. <laughs> I think he knows that he's right. Hmm. So. Um... I say as I palm a machete and a revolver <clears throat> as we speak. <laughs> hmm. So. Yeah, investigation dude is like, this is weird. He went to this pet shop. It's probably his pet shop. Is they're selling like big animals. That's against the Washington Convention or something. That's what he said. Yeah. I don't know if that's a real thing. Neither do I. I'm not gonna yeah. Google to find out. I, I will. <laughs> who knows, who knows what else this guy is selling? Drugs? Human trafficking? I don't know what these Chinese uh, oh, dudes yeah, do it is in a real these Chinatown shops. It's a real thing. The CITS, the Convention yeah, on Convention International of... Trade and Endangered Species. So hmm. don't sell tigers. Cool. Gotcha. Yeah. Show did mind. its research. Well done. Don't sell an endangered tiger. That's kind of illegal. Yeah. All right. So uh, he goes to investigate the shop and they're like, eh. We didn't sell him a tiger. We showed. We sold him this nice scroll of a tiger. This paper tiger. How threatening could a paper tiger possibly be? Is the joke because it's a paper tiger. That's what that means. Um, <laughs> and cop gets mad and leaves. Um, then we got to a couple that go in to buy a pet because their daughter died, and they feel like it would uh, help with the crushing depression from their child dying. Which happens. Um, don't do that. By the way, don't do that. What? Buy a pet? P- pets are not substitutes for loss. It's a terrible, terrible thing to do. Mm. It's true. Uh, and the pet shop owner is like, hmm, to replace a daughter, you say? Okay, let me show you this rabbit with air quotes. This is not human trafficking. This is a rabbit. Yeah. Yes, clearly this is a rabbit. Right. Wink. <laughs> yeah, I, that scene was a little... Like, you're not quite sure whether the uh, parents are just sort of like, yeah, it's a r- rabbit. Uh-huh. Well, they were eventually. I mean, the mom is like, no, that is that is clearly a human child. And, <laughs> and the dad's like, no, that is a rabbit. A rabbit. It's <laughs> clearly rabbit. So yeah, they buy the rabbit, and the shop owner has three conditions and a contract. Hold on, hold on. You didn't tell them the most important thing about this 
quote unquote rabbit that it looks just like their dead dog. <clears throat> oh yeah, yes. it looked yeah. It's a rabbit from an island in Australasia. I'm gonna Aus- say Australia just means the country. Australasia well, is the I mean, where the I mean, islands. Well, I mean, it makes sense that this rabbit would be from Australia hmm. because everything in Australia can kill you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's also pretty fucked up, as we'll find out later. Yeah. Anyway, contract. Yeah, contract that has three rules on it. One, don't show it to fucking people, okay? Seems pretty universal in yeah. all the pets that they sell here. Which probably raised, raised some red flags there on its own, but whatever. Um, Our daughter was dead, and now she's not. <laughs> look, they really want to buy this rabbit. Rabbit. That's what the description is going to be on this video. Dot, 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 rabbit, in quotes. I don't know. I'd find something very suspicious about buying my dead child through a pet store. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. But it's not their dead on child. On multiple levels. Rabbit. What was the second condition? Because I can't remember it. I know what the third one second, was. Second condition was... Uh, was it? Never let the incense that comes with it burn out. Ah, that was, that it. was it. Thank you. That was mildly important, but not as important as the third one, which was don't feed it anything other than uh, salad and water, basically. Well, yeah, you guys hear about Furbies? You know, yeah, or gremlins or whatever. Yeah, gremlins. I was going to say... For some reason, I thought you was for, Sorry, I gave those two mixed up all the time because they look they're so similar. But the rules... no, the, the, Mark Wyatt, great. What's wrong with you? In case you didn't terrify me. In case rules two and three were both equally important, but for different reasons. Hmm. So, yeah, they um, buy the rabbit and <laughs> uh, sort of hide it in like a, I don't know, cloak or cover it with something, take to the car, and go home. And the detective is there doing a stakeout, American style. Right behind the car. Donuts. I hope he brought up steak. We do see yeah, the dog Of course challenging. he did, American. Do you go anywhere without your steak bag? Jesus. I was <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I kind of want steak. Anyway. <clears throat> so he follows them to their home, and... The parents are like, yay, it's great. We have our rabbit back. And it calls them mama and daddy. And yeah, this is creepy. Yeah. It's supposed to be, but it's creepy. Definitely that whole uncanny valley (laughs) thing going on. She has no real expression at all. Because it's a rabbit. Yeah, of course, it's a rabbit. How intelligent are you going to say this today? It's a rabbit. Wink. Uh, until it stops being fun to say. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the detective is uh, outside and he hears a couple of women talking about how terrible it is that the girl Alice died. Uh, it was the parent's daughter that died. Um, and he's like, oh, please keep talking while I ask you questions about this tragedy that occurred. And such. Does, does he even show his badge here, or does he just? No, he's just like I'm new in town. Why don't you tell me some more about this rumor? <laughs> well, you know those American ladies always gossiping. I love to know about dead little girls. That's <laughs> one of my interests. Yes, that that is a special interest to me. Hmm. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I also like rabbits. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> that had nothing to do with this. Don't force it. You're right, you're right. Yeah, so he finds out that the little girl apparently had was a devil with the face of an angel. Okay. Um, uh, no context for a, that yet. Hmm. But... Yeah, there was a brief cutaway to the, the cops at one point. I don't know which point that was. To remind you that he's a cop. Well, to, to talk about, oh, yeah, so this little girl died of substance abuse yeah mm. that was that came a little bit later because it's like yeah but he goes to his uh chief presumably because this is an american cop show apparently um 
and says, yeah, this little girl died of uh, substance abuse. She died of an overdose, so they must have gone to the pet shop to buy drugs, and that's how the little girl died. I'm okay. not sure that's quite how it went. I think he only found out that Alice died from substance abuse when she, when he was talking to the two women who were outside of the house, and that was after the... Yeah, it was, but I, I jumped ahead because Zero brought it up. So, sorry about that. Yeah. So, so, so what point are we at right now? Uh, we're at the bit with... Well, there's the bit with the chief that happens later, but we talked about just now, where, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm going to get a warrant and we're going to bust this case wide open or something. And at the family house with the parents, with the rabbit, uh, they're having dinner. Yay. And she has vegetables because that's all she's allowed to eat, according to the contract. And it goes, ah. I want get the sweets on the counter. And the one's like chocolate chip cookies, I think it was. Yeah, it was like it looked kinda of like um jammy dodgers to be honest. It was I don't kind of know what what? Jammy Dodgers. It's like it a biscuit that's got like coffee. jam in the middle, or jelly as you would call it. Colonials. Um <laughs> uh, that's so later. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. I don't want to. Don't want to cut you off. Sorry. Um, so she is allowed to have one of those because the woman's like, "Yeah, okay." And the dad is like, "But we the contract." And the little girl's like, "Oh, I mean the rabbit is like, ah. and that's." But well, daddy, I, mean, I want it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it takes. Just this once. Man, anybody, anybody give me any Willy Wonka feels? A little bit, I guess. Like, that also had a very similar thing of, hey, you should not do this, and then someone does it, and then everything goes to shit. This didn't last a day. Yeah, yeah it like, didn't take him long, did it? They immediately broke it. The mom's like, it's just one time. It's implied sure. like that time passes, but I'm not sure how much. Hmm. In my, I like to think this all happened on the first day. Yeah, yeah me too. I mean, considering what we learn about them in what, like two minutes after yeah. this, it's, yeah, uh, it, it very well might be. Yeah, so it continues to eat all of the sweet things that they have. And then... Wait, though. Hmm? The exact instant that the rabbit takes the first bite of the cookie, all of the animals at Count D's pet shop suddenly start with the red eyes. And... Oh, right. Mm, that was a thing that happened. And Count D, completely unsurprised, says that they didn't keep the terms of the contract. I and so. That was his name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah it was. Hmm. T-Money. T-Money, yeah. Good old Count D. What's D stand for? Probably Dracula. No, D, you got to keep with your own joke. D-Money, Count D. What does count the D, D stand for? Dollars. Count these dollars. Yeah, count it just stands for dollars. D. That's count terrible. D money. He's got to count D-Money. That was terrible. I need to go back to the drawing board on that because that did not seem good to me. Yeah, yeah I know. That's why I didn't go for that. Anyway, no, 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 that's a key part of One Piece. Sorry, what? Yes. I said nobody knows what the D stands for. That's a key part of One Piece. Uh, 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 what is this, a crossover <laughs> episode? <laughs> anyway. Crossover. So the rabbit is like, ah, it hurts and bulges on the stomach and. Then, uh, yeah, I, I was yeah. thinking, there's going to be a discretion shot here. And there was. And then there wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I was I was curious if they were actually going to show that. I had the same, same thought process. And then it's, it cuts away, and then it cuts back. It's like, what? But they show it, and from the stomach burst, little gray 
infants that are creepy faced and they're saying mama over and over again. Yes, That's an alien. Style human babies. Yeah. Cut to a bit later and we have detective running up to the house after hearing that Alice had died of drug overdose and as soon as he reaches the door Count D is there with his whatever that pet is on his shoulder it's a and why he doesn't rabbit no it's not it is that's that's a a thing if you're Count why are you running in a pet shop huh Anyway, he asks about it, and he just says that the Count is the one who's responsible for all of this, and says that he's coming with him, and then opens yeah, he, the door. Yeah, he basically of the house. accuses the Count of uh, selling them drugs, and yeah. that's why, yeah. Drugs, human trafficking, basically the pet shop was a cover, but it wasn't. No, he just sells very extraordinary pets with uh, magical contracts, or so it seems. It doesn't say it's magical. It, it, it's just a contract. Don't do these things. And funnily enough, if you don't do the things, bad things happen. It's, the magical part is the fact that he knows about it the second the contract is broken. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, yeah so they open the door and... Yeah. In the dim, in the dim light, we see a very disturbing horde of those same gray infants, and they're just everywhere, and they're chanting "Mama." And then Detective Guy turns on the lights, and suddenly, rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> See that one was intentional. It was supposed to be a dramatic pause, but no, it's uh, they're rabbits. <laughs> Suddenly, rabbits. Yeah, right there beside you. Oh God, that's. I am proud of us that that was the first time we made a little shop joke. <laughs> so I proud. mean, it's, we're pet shop of horrors, little yeah. shop of horrors. Mm-hmm. It was inevitable. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so he wonders at first if it was an illusion uh, or a hallucination, rather. And and Count D admits that he did sell the virus, but it was... What was the word that he used? Prolific? Yes, yeah. that was it. Prolific. And then suddenly the rabbit starts lunging at him and scares them off with his gun. Because oh, he doesn't fire just you. once to scare him off. He fires six fucking times. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta and make sure they're scared. They're Australian rabbits. They're tough and they eat and kill things. So they're very... Case in point, the rabbits clear away after they're scattered by... Uh, well, after they're scattered, the rabbits clear away to reveal the bloody ravaged corpse of Alice's father. Mm. And Count D proceeds to say that it was a group of man-eating rabbits. Can oh, it? yes. And then comes the part where a bunch of the rabbits suddenly give birth right in front of him. Mm. Can I just say that, like, the dad was like, no, she's a rabbit. Don't give her the sweets. And then I was like, it's fine. And the dad is the one who just gets immediately murdered. There's a reason for that. Oh. Because without the, if the mom died, we wouldn't get the exposition in the thing at the end. I know, yeah. but like, poor dad. <laughs> that's right? Right? Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, so I'm a little confused on the detail with the incense, though. Like, that was a drug of some sort. It wasn't. The, the incense was to burn away the smell of drugs, because rule number two, you had to burn your day. Because the rabbit doesn't like the smell of drugs. Yeah. Which are in the house still, for some reason. From so drug addict daughter. He basically knew everything right away. And... Which is a little creepy. I did not realize that. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize it either until just now, but it makes 
a disturbing amount of sense. Mm. And speaking of a disturbing amount of sense, then comes the part where they go upstairs and find Alice's mother surrounded by all of those rabbits kneeling she on the has ground. She stabbed to death. They're dead rabbits. Or at least that's, that seems to be the implication. She's holding a bloody knife. Well, yeah, you mean the dead rabbits. Well, no, those are actual rabbits this time. Like, Are they? Are they? So, sort of. And so anyway... Count D comes up to her and asks why she violated the terms of the contract and she says that Alice was just begging for it and she gave him a, gave her a little bite of cookie because it made her look so happy mm-hmm. and Count D remarks in a calm me- measured voice that Someone else is going to have to explain. So I've got the hiccups. That's all right. Um, he says that uh, parents' love is truly something amazing, or something along those lines. And we he get the exposition. Human parents, actually. Sorry. He blatantly said human parents. Actually. Ah. <laughs> um, and we get the exposition that yeah, this is actually what led to the daughter dying because you know she they spoiled her let her do whatever she wanted and then she just did whatever she wanted including crimes and doing drugs all the time and then she ended up in the hospital because she and was doing so many drugs yep and murder there was murder mentioned uh and they say please give me drugs please please just once yeah. And Girls on her deathbed, and her mom gives her drugs. Yep. I mean, how deathbed are we talking here? Because that could have she's actually been She's emaciated. Like, yeah. I mean, is she going to die, or is Even, she going to be fine with time? Like, she's in the hospital, emaciated, so one would assume she is on certain kinds of medi- yeah. medication. So giving and her up to an IV. illicit substances on top of that would probably not do good things. Yeah. And it didn't. And that was the result of the love and just this once, Count D explains. Mm. And, well, the mother basically has a breakdown, screaming that she loved her, she was still her daughter. Mm. Then the rabbits lunge at her and begin attacking her as well. That lasts for a few seconds, and then all at once the rabbits fall dead. Why? Because the cookie that they ate was a poisonous substance for rabbits. And in a blatant disregard for basic biology, infused their very DNA with poison <laughs> as they bred. Yeah. We've established that they're not normal rabbits. This. <laughs> no, of course not. They're rabbits. All right, so real quick, let's re- let's review. Rule number one: don't fucking show it to anybody. They kept that one. They did. Rule, yeah, they, they did. didn't show the rabbit. Rule number two: you must burn this incense every single day. The reason to burn this incense every day is to get the fucking smell of drugs out of this room. You're gonna keep the rabbit in because you're going to put the rabbit in Alice's room. Burn the fucking incense. Rabbits don't like the smell of drugs, and that's why the rabbits were all aggressive and shit. Rule number three, do not feed anything but fresh vegetables and water to this rabbit. Because if you did, you're going to fucking kill it because, goddammit, it's a rabbit. (laughs) Which is the most basic rule out of the three, honestly. Like, (laughs) there was no trick to that rule. It's like, don't give chocolate and shit to rabbits. That's kind of... Yeah, actually, now I think about it, that had nothing to do with the rabbit giving birth and ripping out of the rabbit <clears throat> yeah uh, so and we wrap up the episode with detective and count d returning through town to chinatown and count d tells the detective about it and detective accurately says that 
he knew it was going to happen all the time. He seems, he basically seems to have <coughs> arrested his suspicions of Count D, despite, well, technically it's been proven that he behind any of the murders and everything had a quote unquote perfectly logical explanation and it was all the parents' fault. But at the same time, the detective doesn't really seem swayed by the omniscience or the bat winged rabbit thing on his shoulder. Anyway, he basically invites detective guy in the pet shop to talk. It's all that he, he vanishes into the depths of the pet shop and that's where the episode comes to an end. Hmm. I thought this was alright. Yeah, agreed. I'm not one for horror. I'm not one for... I honestly might watch more of this. I do yeah. like stuff like The Twilight Zone. I felt Second like it of... dragged. It went on yeah. too long, I feel. Yeah, probably. I mean, to be honest, the whole thing with the cop doesn't really add that much, aside from, you know, bystander to give... Uh, What's the word? Telling the audience things. It's exposition. Thank you. My brain went dead there for a second. Yes, it just gives you a place to vent exposition at. Aside from that, he doesn't really add anything, and his scenes were kind of pointless. But um... uh, sets up future conflict, and I guess somebody has to find. Yeah, that's stuff. that's what I was thinking. Just setting up the character for the rest of the series. That's the way I saw it. I mean, it's four yeah. episodes. There isn't much of a rest of the series to set up but sure yeah. hmm. any other thoughts before we roll up um i i liked it but at the same time it's it's i feel like it's not necessarily something that particularly interests me because i these types of shows were there is something that, you know, you got to follow these rules or else ooh, something bad happens to you. Like, you know, they're always going to break the rules. Always. They have to. And so there's a kind of predictability to it that is, I'm not particularly fond of. Yeah, yeah, you do have a point there. I mean, if the story is, oh, they're given a list of rules to follow and then they follow all of them and everything is okay, is not a particularly entertaining story, conversely. <laughs> Unless, perhaps, it's from the perspective of the only person who does follow all the rules and they perhaps see all of the occurrences who doesn't follow the rules. That could be an interesting take on it. Yeah. But like For hmm. me, the detective is the most interesting part because there's not all usually a detective for these types of stories that actually seems somewhat competent. Hmm. So, I don't know. Well, it was a good one. This could have been better, but I mean, like I said, I liked it, and I, I'm prob I'm probably gonna watch the rest of the series if it's just four episodes. Yeah, so. it's only four. Uh, second episode, uh, second episode was kind of better in different ways because it doesn't really well kind of fucks around a bit more um, with the detective now that okay. he knows what's going on, so get to see more stuff. What I like about the show is not that you know everyone's going to break the rules. That's the whole point of the show. Mm -hmm. But I like like looking at these episodes and trying to figure out what the flaw of the people breaking the rules is. Yeah, that's that's the part that makes the show. I like, I like it. What did they do in the past that wound up with them coming here in the first place? I like that part. Hmm. Okay, I will admit that's significantly more interesting. That's fair. Right then. So, a glowing review from the Fan of Flux podcast, or glowing from some, and... Glowing is a little strong, but sure. It was good. <laughs> it was good. So All right. Medium to high, or medium to decent, I suppose. Uh, All right, Kenji, if you please. Right. We could have gotten something a lot worse, I'll say that. We may get something a lot worse this week. Who knows what the random Yay! store. All right. So this week we get 20. 20. That's uh, 
I believe it's you now. Yep, it's you. All Would right. have been T, but Q is me. Also. All right. Uh, you. 28. 28? 28. Right. Now, 28, we get nine. Nine. All right. Ultimate muscle. Ultimate muscle. Ultimate muscle. Kenshi. Ultimate muscle was 10. Damn it! Oh. <laughs> this one is uh, ultimate girls. I mean, the the number I rolled was 10. Yeah. It totally definitely was. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Definitely believe you. Oh, man. Ultimate girls. During a monster attack on the city, which is something that happens quite often, Silk and her two friends try to get close to the attacking monster for a better view. An unfortunate choice of location to watch from leads to UFO Man, the city's giant protector, to land on the girls, crushing them to death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? That took a turn I wasn't expecting. Feeling sorry, UFO Man blames their death on the monster and promises to bring Silk and her friends back to life by lending them his power. But the catch is that they now have to become the city's protector as well. So it started off with an interesting t- back to generic, I'm guessing, magical girl uh, superhero. Anime. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Crush you to death. Whoopsies. You know how it is. Just does, these things are so finicky. I mean, it's their fault. <laughs> oh, it absolutely is. No, 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 there's no kind of about it. They got close to try and see a better view of the monster. Getting a real Neon Genesis vibe from the two kids being stupid enough to watch the fight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyone vetoing? No. 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 Nah. I mean, who, who even has one left? Me. I do. Me and Patient have people who actually care about their choices. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, you know me, Casey. I'm not going to be to it. it has an obscene amount of fan service. Yeah. yeah so next time, patient's going to veto is when we get like a Queen's Blade or something. I'm Queen's not going to veto Blade until two. If Chubra comes up again, I'm going to veto it. Not... <laughs> and then yeah. you'll have no defense until next year. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Well. All right. I mean, RNG. It's landed on things we vetoed a few times, but I mean, Queen's Blade was a special case. That was one in 27, not one in however many this is. Yeah, there, there are, are no a lot shows. of C's, so. Yes. Surprisingly, considering, you know, there isn't a C in the Japanese language or equivalent, so it's a little weird, but, you know, whatever. <clears throat> C! So. Next week, we'll be watching Ultimate Girls. So look forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be a thing. All right, we have to record the podcast. So bye, everybody. Short outro. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye. Remember to follow the contract. Sinister. Rabbit.